plants aren't just for food. In some cases, they're a feast for the eyes on their own and flowering is really good. And that's the magic of spring. A little bit of sun on the face. You can hear the birds cheeping in the background. The bumblebees are already out. They're my favourites and hearing them buzz by. And of course, putting flowers into the garden early on is essential for bees. In fact, if anything, leave a few dandelions out, please or plant a lot of early flowering plants just to make sure there's some early food for those bees and they'll really appreciate it. So there's two real classifications of uh, uh, plants we call bedding plants or annuals. Some of them live a lot more than just annual. We call them bedding because they used to be bedded out in the parks and gardens. And then of course there's perennial plants um, that you're seeing in flower at the moment for scythia and the like and I'll talk about those in a moment. But I just want to Concentrate on the colour that's available to boost your garden and put a smile on your face because I know we naturally think of planting up pots, containers, hanging baskets, window boxes and everything with geraniums and fuchsias and busy lizzies and lobelia and allison and a host of others. But in my garden, a lot of those are still very young plants because it's the summer. They really cut out. And this is from the greenhouse here. We grow some from seed. We pot some up from, from little plug plants and they start to grow. But it's going to be a while before these are giving colour to my garden. So in between uh, that, we've got autumn planting, which is just about to, which is just finished really. The, the, uh, a lot of the winter flowering pansies are looking certainly tired in my garden. And, uh, and wallflowers and cyclamen, they're finishing. And um, before the geraniums and fuchsias come in, we've got this block of spectacular colour. Prims, you've got to love them. Look at that. The secret with a lot of the prims is you think that's just the flower. When in reality, if you look into the heart of the plant, hundreds of buds. That'll be producing more and more colour. And the, and the magic, there's so many different varieties. And hold on. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that is nice. When I started in horticulture, I worked in a, a nursery that grew prims and you walked into the greenhouse and the fragrance was fantastic. So primulas are really good and polyanthus to put colour in your window boxes, tubs and containers. And, you know, just a simple tub by the back door that puts a smile on your face when you leave for work or when you go shopping and a smile on your face when you return back. Dianthus or pinks are pretty good too. You get a lot of good fragrance from these little... Ooh, that's cheeky. Well, that's really sweet. You get a lot of fragrance, but look at the colour. Perfect for pepping up borders and giving that colour just when you need it. And we've all been dying for spring, haven't we? Oh, we need spring. Some lighter nights, some colour and a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of optimism in the world. So there are many other different varieties of prims you can choose on lots of other plants other than this. You can buy them in trays, you can buy them in pots and containers, but adding colour into your garden is great. And we're going to plant up some tubs. It's a great activity with the kids. But in the meanwhile, let me show you some more uh, perennial shrubs that are flowering at this time of year. Now flowers, well, they just keep giving in a garden and shrubs that flower are fantastic because you put them in the garden they just get bigger and better every year and there are lots of different plants to choose from but some of my earliest favorites are here and this is a classic flowering currant so this flowering currant produces much much better flowers than the fruiting ones which are normally just white this one has a, a mixture of pink as you can see it's in bud my favorite time in bud there's hope as it opens out into colours. You can see they're just opening out here into these lovely pink outer petals with white in the centre. They're beautiful and it'll grow, you know, sort of like nearly up to head height, uh, if not more once they've been in for a, for a longer period of time. But they're marvellous. And of course, it's not just the currants that are flowering in the garden. Forsythia, they're also coming out. That massive gold that really peppers and age. When we finish really with daffodils, forsythia coming out, flowering currants, and of course you've also got a lot of the early viburnums just budding and opening out into colour too. And skimmias that we've had in our gardens in bud for a long time, they're opening out too. And that is the magic of early colour. And they're great, as I said before, for bees especially, having early flowers. And if you look around and you see your garden, you think, doesn't look much colour at the moment. The secret is, is to go to the garden centre 
once every month and buy something that's perennial in flower, bring it back to your garden and plant it in. And the same the next month and the next month. And then every year you know there'll be something giving you colour in your garden. Of course, there's lots of other colourful perennials. Campanulas are great, showing a, a huge amount of colour, um, which is great for cascading over walls. You can also add them into hanging baskets and containers like I've just done, but for more perennial varieties of campanula, they're great in the garden. Iobris as well, this is a beauty. Look at the flowers on that. It's a nice front of border plant, all rockery, growing over a wall, something similar to that, and it'll just keep bringing and getting bigger and better every time. This one's called Snow Surfer Forte. Aren't you beautiful? And of course, you've got a lot of the alpines, the early alpines that are showing flower colour now. This is Saxifraga, this one here is an early pink. It's got this massive flush of these pink flowers, very dark in bud. See that? And then it opens into these lighter. It forms a lovely mound in the garden. There are so many flowering shrubs to put in, but I've got to say at this point, plan for your summer at the same time. Things like rosemary, you can buy them as young plants. They establish themselves really well and then they just grow. It's not just for cooking, they have beautiful flowers. The purple flowers are particularly attractive to bees. I know I keep banging on about bees. I love bees. We've got to give bees a chance. So why not plant some lavender in there as well? They start off as young plants, it gets themselves established so you get the flower in your own garden rather than buying them later on. So by planting things early like lavender, like rosemary and many other summer flowering shrubs and roses, great time for putting roses in the garden too so they get established. Spring is a marvellous time for planting. Right, now to do a bit of work, I'm going to take some of these plants here and get my girls to do their containers. For more helpful gardening videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share this video.